Hello everyone, welcome to Rural Water Resource Management NPTEL course. This is week 12, lecture three. In this week, we have been looking at some more data for understanding the rural water resources. And we have been using the water budget as a starting point. So from the water budget, we have been estimating different water availabilities and um, uh, losses in the system so that we can capture more water and store it wisely or use the available resources more wisely without getting into losses. For that, let's look at some more descriptions. Uh, from the water balance, we understood that evapotranspiration is a big loss to the system. I'm just again redefining evapotranspiration, which was already uh, defined. It is a combination word of evaporation and transpiration. Evaporation is from open bodies and land surfaces. For example, you have water body, a lake, a pond, or a dam, and water is stagnant. From there, water evaporates because radiation is happening, is hitting on the water. There is some warming up and then evaporation happens. It can also happen from open bodies as in rivers and streams while flowing, but it is much lesser compared to stagnant water because when water moves, it cools down. Then you have your land surface. On the land, there is soil moisture, there is some water pockets and all those can evaporate, right? So that is where you see in a hot, hot day, you see the soil cracking because the water has lost, uh, taken up through evaporation and the soil cracks. So evaporation is kind of conversion from a liquid state of water to vapor state um, and uh, leaving behind the cooling. So the man wants to cool, uh, so that's what happens. Same transpiration, we transpire, right? Our skin, uh, we have holes, and when we work out or when we run, we sweat. And that sweat is transpiration where water takes up the heat and comes out of your body as sweat and you cool down. But there is also, it also can, some of it can also go to vapor uh, stage. But most of the transpiration, which is bigger in budget and volume, happens from plants and trees where they take water, liquid water from the roots, pump it through the stem or, or trunk, and then uh, pump it back to the leaves. And from there, the leaves, it goes out as vapor. And this process happens during the photosynthesis. We would be reminded of the school experiments we did using a plant and a bottle, you cover it overnight and you see vapor on the side. So these are examples of transpiration. So transpiration does have to happen. You cannot control it, but you can actually understand the volume that is lost from the system from which you could see your water budget. So if, for example, you have a water volume in your groundwater storage. And per day, you're losing this much to ET. Let's say you have 100 uh, cubic meters, and then you're losing one cubic meter per day through transpiration, or let's say ET, evapotranspiration. So it's very important to understand that you are left with only 100 days more, unless you have to recharge or stop the evapotranspiration by lessening down the area of the crop or use the crop. So most of the time, because this understanding is not there, what happens is the farmers would put more water on the field, not conservatively, and then it grows, but it doesn't ripen. For example, the seeds don't come for rice, paddy, or the fruits don't come for tomato. And before that, the crop starts to die or dry. And at that point, there's no other way. You just let cattle and livestock eat the, the crop 
so that at least some energy and some um, you know uh, feed is is being created but it's a big loss it is still a loss but you would see that's why some um, cattle are grazing in a field which is not fully grown so that could be less uh, lost if we know how much water we have through the rural water resource management framework we have uh, tanks we have uh, groundwater storage we have dams uh, and then we have check dams so we know how much water volume is there and from the volume we can siphon the water into the land and then get more um, uh, out of it through uh, transpiration uh, reduction evaporation reduction etc you can also reduce it by limiting the acreage for example if i have 100 acres and it consumes one cubic meter per day it's still a small number i'm just telling okay, one cubic meter per day you can say that i don't have that much water so i'm just going to cut it by half which means uh, yeah i've put in the seeds for the one acre but i'm just going to do maintenance of half an acre 0.5 acre and that 0.5 acre only i'll supply water so here uh, i know i have the land to get more profit but i'm reducing my profit so that I don't get a loss. If you want the whole acreage, you might get a loss because the water won't be enough for the entire acreage. So all these are built up in the system through the evapotranspiration. Soil moisture tells you to irrigate or not, but how much to irrigate is taken from evapotranspiration. Okay, so now, as I said, there, these data is very important. Now we've set up why it's important. Uh, but we know that you cannot have each and every plant monitored for ET rate. Whereas every, every plant contributes to ET, every tree contributes to ET, it is impossible to put a meter on every plant and tree, right? It's so expensive and also uh, the errors might be coming uh, through different settings and stuff. So uh, what a lot of uh, countries use is remote sensing driven models so they understand the physics behind evapotranspiration which is basically you have to have water you have to have an incoming energy which is going to heat the water and evaporate uh, or transpire through plants so radiation they know they know the rainfall the water storage soil moisture and then they know the characteristics of the plant how much it can consume and then from there they estimate the evapotranspiration uh, through a model. So one of the models that has been used widely is the variable infiltration capacity model or called the VIC model. And since it's driven by remote sensing data and NRSC data, it is called NRSC variable infiltration capacity model. So NRSC is under the ISRO, as I said in the soil moisture class, uh, it is the National Remote Sensing Center, uh, and it does have mandate to provide these kind of advisories to farmers. And the website looks like this. Uh, it is uh, mostly uh, with the India map when it starts. To the right-hand side, it gives you the area of focus, the time when the data was taken, the average value, and the other data metrics that you can download. Here, there's no sensitive data. So unlike uh, your river data and storage, uh, all the data is available. On the left, <coughs> you have the um, uh, parameters, how you could select the data for your model. So now coming back is you have this evapotranspiration understood. And because there is less data, for example, you'll have to put uh, every tree or every plant and every plant has a different area or a bit different weight. You don't see all the fruits of same weight, right? Similarly, all the leaves are not same area. Uh, some leaves transpire more, some leaves transpire less. And so you have this issue between uh, plants and uh, other intakes. Moving on, um, and that is why we have this remote sensing, but remote sensing also has a limitation on the pixel size. So depending on the area and the pixel size, the size of resolution of the camera in the remote sensing device or satellite, uh, your 
estimation is based on that pixel size. Okay. So here we are grouping the trees, the, the plants and water bodies together within one pixel and taking an average value because there is some characteristics which are reflected back to the satellite and those characteristics are used for estimating ET. It is kind of uh, an estimation, but uh, it holds good in most regions across the world uh, and it has been very helpful for farmers to know this value. Because you, you cannot just look at a crop and then estimate ET always. Yes, there is the, the ET method where you have a crop coefficient method, you multiply it, etc. But the plant grows and there is demand based on rainfall and other uh, characteristics, dryness, etc. All these are put in the VIC model. Whereas in the FAO method, it is just assuming that. The, uh, there is unlimited supply of water and the plant can grow freely, which is not always the case. There is a lot of constraints in growing. And that is captured in these VIC models, which are driven by real time data from the satellites, near real time, like two days, one week uh, ago. With this, I will be uh, showing the website. So I'm going to share the website. I'll take you back to the home page. And from the home page, we go to water data and hydrometeorological data. We also see agro climatic uh, zones. So these are zones uh, which you see in the, in the bottom. These are zones with similar rainfall, soil, and geology type. And those types could be okay for your uh, water um, assumptions, uh, your ET assumptions, because you cannot say that across India, this is going to be the water storage. But for that, they have divided India into agroclimatic zones. And each agroclimatic zone has its own type of geology, the rainfall, soil type, etc. So then you can club it instead of having it as big boundaries, you can at least club it in sections of agroclimatic zones. So you just click evapotranspiration. It does take time initially to load. The background is black, uh, so to make it faster, I'm going to change the base layer into a street layer, which is uh, much quicker. That you can do now once uh, the highlighting is gone. So I go to base layer map and I click streets. Okay. Good. So uh, first things first we did, we just changed the base layer so that it quickly loads. Um, and then the right hand side, you see that automatically it has taken India as the boundary and it has taken two dates, uh, three dates, actually 28, 29, 30, uh, and taken the average value automatically. It's still the data is populating while we talk, um, but uh, I think we can continue until it populates. Okay, so it has taken three dates, 2022, uh, February 28th. Um, actually, it is more than, it's a month. Uh, sorry, it's a month uh, date it has taken and it is averaged it out. So 0 0.81 is the average of almost a month because that's February 28th and then you have March um, uh, 20, uh, 30, right? And the average value is 0 0.81. So now the question is, is it okay to have an overall India average? It doesn't make sense because uh, across India, there is different rainfall, different sunlight, which is actually helping for evaporation and transpiration and different soil types that can hold the water and release it for transpiration. So it won't be that useful to have an India average number, but they're just trying to show you that you can scale up or scale down depending on your interest. So moving on, we have um, the 0.81 as the um, average value, and we have the state-wise data. Okay, state-wise, what was the average for that particular period? And what you see here is the uh, daily evapotranspiration average. So for the whole of India, what is the daily ET 
uh, taken per date and then you can see it comes down and then goes up slightly and comes down so going up slightly could be your rubby season crop whereas uh, here it just goes down because it is drying from a high end now the point here to be understood is um, let's first take zero because when you come down you have states so when you look at the states is zero a correct value how can a state have zero evapotranspiration, similar to soil moisture we saw? Okay, so the understanding is, I'm just going to click on the Mount Nicobar so that you can see it. It is very small size compared to the resolution of the satellites. So the satellite and data that goes into the VIC model cannot capture the dynamics inside these small islands. And for that, it puts zero. Technically, it should have been NA value. Because when you put zero and when you average it, average across the states for India, the zero will pull down the value. Okay, so look at the, the graph here. You could see that it has been um, uh, used widely for that. So Andaman is taking some time. Normally zeros don't uh, have to show anything, but I think the, um, I just want to refresh it. Okay. So while it's refreshing, as I said, please understand that there is um, uh, a data for all of India and the states which are smaller in size or the union territories which are smaller in size than the pixel will not have data. And for example, Lakshadweep will not have data. So you will have to not use this in the averaging. Uh, you can do a small exercise by yourself. You can take the India average and then the states uh, per day is given. So you take the states total per day or average per day and average it for India with, with Andaman and uh, Lakshuri. Then you can do the same exercise without Andaman and Lakshuri. You will find a different story. Uh, if the story is different, if the results are different, then the zero should not have been taken. Zero is not correct. Okay, if the values are same, then the zero technically means NAN values. I'm going to put the base uh, layer back again so that we can have it load up. Okay, so I hope the Lakshadweep and uh, Andaman um, Y0 is given as correct. We understood. See, Lakshadweep is also zero. So this cannot be zero, especially we know that Andaman has a lot of forest and trees transpire a lot, much more than plants. So saying that there is no transpiration uh, or ET from that land is wrong. So you'll have to understand this when you write your reports and uh, articles. So let's look at India now. So we have this data for entire uh, India. Uh, this search box will come, so don't uh, entertain it. You can close it if you want. It just picks randomly states and districts. So for you to understand what you're looking at the data here, just go up, it will say India is the, the location where this data has been taken. Okay, so when you look at the um, data here, you see that there is some uh, states which are blue, high ET. So now the high ET, does it mean that there is a lot of water, so it's evaporating and transpiring? or people are pumping in water and then that pumps help to increase that transpiration. So the overall ET rate increases. Unfortunately, in this region where we are, I'm showing the latter is the correct reason, which is uh, the values are not the same. They pump a lot, okay? For example, Rajasthan, Gujarat are known to be highly using groundwater resources, Punjab, et cetera, Haryana but they have good ET, so it means there's a lot of crop activity that goes on. And for that crop activity, there has to be pumping of water into the land. And that pumping of water is then taken up as evapotranspiration. Okay? So this can be used to understand uh, regions where excessive pumping, excessive cropping is going on so that we can manage the water resources better. If you look at the Ganges plain, not much water is there, uh, use is there. So ET is still almost in the blue region 
uh, 0.25 region, uh, whereas the evapotranspiration, um, if it is very, very high, okay, it is given as red, okay, in, in this region, we don't see much red color, uh, but we'll be changing the dates so that we see more of the red color. So I'm going to go back to the unit wise and if you come down here, you do see other states like Lakshadweep and other, other regions. Now this side is clear. I'm going to go to the type of aggregate. So you do, do you want the sum? If you click it, it'll ask you, do you want the sum, the ET or average? Average is good because you take an average per day, whereas sum would be adding up all the averages per day. And no, most normally uh, it looks um, uh, kind of uh, confusing if you look at sum for ET because every day is just cumulatively growing. Okay, where you want to do is average, and then you can multiply it by the area to get average daily um, water loss from the system. ET is a water loss. Okay, it may have beneficial um, um, aspects. So for example, plant growth is important, uh, but at the end of the day, since it's a groundwater. Uh, budget or a rural water budget, it is a loss to the system. ET is a loss. Okay, so I'm going to do average, and there's only one source NRSCBIC model we can keep it. Uh, let's do Maharashtra because uh, there's a lot of uh, sugarcane that grows here, more than a year it grows. Then we can say Jalgowan, um, and then slowly. The map will zoom into Jalgo one uh, and then show us the data. If it doesn't, you can just pull the map to one location and it shows. Yeah. So it doesn't center the map there, but Jalgo one is shown. Then what you do is you click on the data range. So now you have set the area of interest, which is Jalgo one. And now we can set up the date range. And I'm going to do the monsoon post monsoon period until the summer right now before the summer period which is the march end okay oops okay so we have uh, i'm just going to go to june june 1 so which is before the onset of monsoon until 30th uh, March, which is the day we have. So this is striked off, which means that we don't have the data yet. So once you click it, automatically the data starts to populate. There's no submit button as in other uh, data bases for within WRIS. So right now the data is running, crunching the numbers. While the map is being populated, you can see the data already here. So it says India, Maharashtra, Jalgaon. So the steps are taken as India average, Maharashtra, and then Jalgaon. So we've zoomed into Jalgaon district and then taken average ET from 2021-1 uh, uh, June, okay, to uh, March end uh, using NRIC, BIC model, et cetera. So it gives you around 1.87 millimeters per day is always there for ET, but it is not mentioned because we are doing a daily count we cannot say daily is equal to millimeters per day. Okay, so that is where um, when you know that you're giving a daily data, you can remove the per day out. So here we have daily uh, wise evapotranspiration rate. So evapotranspiration in millimeters, there's no per day, but since here it is daily, you can just take it off and you can see it grow up and then come down. So the growing up is the growing period of the crop. Uh, and then also the availability of water to evaporate because when they apply water, they, there's evaporation. Here, this period is mostly your uh, Karif crop where rainfall is giving water uh, and then there's a lot of transpiration happening. The rainfall also gives water to the ponds, lakes, dams. So there is a lot of evaporation happening. And then it comes down because the rainfall has come down. But the crop also is trying to slow down. It has grown well, and now it's going down. And right now, before the summer, there's very less evapotranspiration happening uh, because the crops are also being harvested, most of them, uh, and or the uh, water is not enough to sustain the entire area. So only some areas are 
given the water for cropping. So this is how you could uh, look at one section in detail. Uh, here is your data per day um, for this uh, GIS website. You can also download it from here. So you have a video panel, which is not activated now, uh, but you do have other aspects in the data columns. Okay, and the others are given here just to report, download, et cetera, et cetera. To make it zoom out, I'm just going to use this, and then you can have this uh, box to show where the water is coming, like where to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so here's how you would do evapotranspiration data. It is per date, it is per location. You cannot go smaller than a district size block is not available. Uh, so you'll have to continue with uh, the district size. Okay, so um, here we are, we are um, uh, combining both the systems uh, of uh, losses, evaporation and transpiration. One data is taken, which is driven by the NRS CBIC model. Uh, the data can be taken as a daily time step, which is correct. Monthly is kind of uh, averaging and summing into monthly, but you can do that in Excel, right? Annual loss, et cetera. But uh, normally because rainfall is not annual, uh, you can take an annual rate, but per day rainfall is available. So if you look at it, per day rainfall is there, per day soil moisture, per day, uh, evapotranspiration per day, river discharge is there, all this is per day. The groundwater, yes, storage is not per day, but you can kind of do it uh, indirectly uh, and then measure it uh, at a monthly scale. That's where you put the monthly budget in, monthly or seasonal. Okay. So here uh, we have downloaded uh, the data. We have looked at how it looks on the screen. When you download it, it's the same thing on Excel sheet. Uh, and we have picked one location for this uh, study. Uh, that's it with evapotranspiration data. I will see you in the next class on more tools for data management. Thank you.